In today's video, I'm gonna do a walkthrough of the math no calculator section of SAT practice test nine. I've scored perfectly on back-to-back -back SAT math sections, and as I go through these questions, I'm gonna show you the most efficient way to solve each and every problem. So with all that being said, make sure to like and subscribe, and let's go ahead and get started with question one. For the system of equations above, what is the value of x plus y? So the first thing I'd be looking to do is to add or subtract my bottom equation from my top equation to get x plus y immediately. In this case, I see I can't do that, so I'm gonna go ahead and solve for x first. So to solve for x, since I have 2y in my bottom equation, I'm going to go ahead and multiply my top equation by 2. So that way I get minus 2y, and then I can go ahead and add my bottom equation with plus 2y to eliminate my y and solve for x. So when I do this, I'll have 2 times 2x, which is 4x, plus x, which will leave me with 5x. Then I'll have 2 times negative y, which gives me negative 2y, plus 2y, which eliminates my y. Then I'll have 2 times 8, which gives me 16. 16 plus 4 will give me 20. From there, I divide each side by 5 to solve for x. I see that 20 over 5 will give me 4. So x will equal 4. Now i got to solve for y since I need the value of x plus y. So to solve for y, I'll just go ahead and plug in my x right here. So I see I'll have 4 plus 2y equals 4. Well, since I've already got 4 and equals 4, I know that y then must equal 0. So since I know that now that y is going to equal 0, x plus y is going to equal 4. So my answer there is going to be b for number 1. Moving on to number 2, which of the following is equivalent to 2 times the quantity x squared minus x plus 3 times the quantity x squared minus x. So in this case, i got to distribute my 2 to my x squared. That's going to give me 2x squared. And then I'll have to distribute my 2 to my negative x as well, leaving me with negative 2x. Then I've got to add my 3x squared. And then I've also got to take my 3 and move it over uh, to that negative x as well, thus giving me minus 3x. From here, I'm just going to go ahead and combine my like terms. So I'll have 2x squared plus 3x squared, which will give me 5x squared. And I'll also have minus 2x minus 3x, which will give me minus 5x. So therefore, my answer there is going to be answer choice A. All right, moving on to number three. Which of the following statements is true about the graph of the equation 2y minus 3x equals negative 4 in the xy plane? Then I see all my questions are dealing with slope and y-intercept, so I'm going to go ahead and get this equation in slope-intercept form. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 3x to each side. Okay, so I'm going to add 3x to each side. That's going to give me 2y is equal to 3x minus 4. At this point, I divide each side by 2 to isolate y. And I can see then that I'm going to have a positive slope, okay, positive slope of 3 over 2, so I can get rid of a and b, and I'm going to have a negative y-intercept of negative 2. So therefore, my answer is going to be d, positive slope, negative y-intercept. All right, moving on to number 4. The front of a roller coaster car is at the bottom of the hill and is 15 feet above the ground. If the front of the roller coaster car rises at a constant rate of 8 feet per second, which of the following equations gives the height h in feet of the front of the roller coaster car s seconds after it starts up the hill. Well, we know initially it's 15 feet above the ground. So therefore, my y-intercept has to be plus 15. I see the only answer choice with that is A. And then just to double check with that, we also see that we have a constant increase of 8 feet per second with that 8s. So my answer is going to be A for number 4. All right, moving on to number 5 now. The equation above gives the amount C in dollars an electrician charges for a job that takes H hours. Ms. Sanchez and Mr. Rowland each hired this electrician. The electrician worked two hours longer on Mrs. Sanchez's job than on Mr. Rowland's job. How much more did the electrician charge Mrs. Sanchez than Mr. Rowland? Well, since the electrician worked two hours longer on her job, we have to plug in that two with H. We see 75 times two is gonna give us 150. Therefore, our answer is gonna be answer choice C. Okay, that Y-intercept doesn't affect how much more Ms. Sanchez is charging than Mr. Rowland because they both pay that 125. All right, so our answer is going to be 150. Moving on to number six. The circle above has center O. Uh, the length of arc ADC is 5 pi and x equals 100. What is the length of arc ABC? So arc ABC is what we want to solve for. I'm going to put that in blue. And then arc ADC is what we're given. I'm going to put that in orange. So we know that arc ADC is 5 pi and we know x is 100. Well, since x, this angle here that I'm putting in blue, is 100, we know that that arc length ADC is going to be 100 degrees over 360 degrees, right? That's the fraction that that arc length is of the total circumference. So therefore, we can go ahead and simplify that to 10 over 36. We know that 10 over 36 of the circumference, so of circumference, is 5 pi. We want to know what 26 over 36 is now. Well, since 26 over 36 is 2.6 times as big as 10 over 36, we know then that our arc length, our larger arc length, which is ABC, so arc length ABC is 2.6 then 
times our arc length of ADC, which was 5 pi. So we do 2.6 times 5 pi, and that is going to leave us with 13 pi. So 13 pi will be our answer because 2.6 times 5 pi is 13 pi. So our answer there is going to be B for number 6. All right, moving on to number 7. If 8 over x equals 160, what is the value of x? In this case, immediately I know my answer is D because 8 divided by any number that is greater than 1 is going to make it smaller. So 8 has to get divided by a number that's smaller than 1 in order to get bigger and equal 160. So my answer there has to be D. All right, moving on to number 9, or number 8. In the equation above, A is a constant. If no value of x satisfies the equation, what is the value of A? In order for no value of x to satisfy the equation, we have to have equal slopes and different y-intercepts. So let's go ahead and do that. So we see that our slope on our right side is going to be 3x plus 5x, which will give us 8x. So 8x is the slope on the right side. We see that our intercept is going to be 3 times 5, which is 15, and then minus 5, which will give us 10. So its intercept there is going to be 10. All right. Now all we got to do is make sure we get the same slope on our left side since we see we have a different intercept of negative 15. So we have different intercepts. Let's get the same slope now. In order to get 8x over here, we need a to be 4 because 2 times 4 would give us 8 times that x would also give us 8x. So our answer has to be C. All right, moving on to number 9. So we've got a graph. We have a system of three equations as graphed in the xy plane. How many solutions does the system have? Well, a solution is going to be where all three of those graphs intersect at the same point. We see that only occurs one time. It's not where two graphs intersect. Okay, that would be wrong. That'd be like right here. That is not a solution because it's where only two of those points are intersecting. There's only one place where all three of these points intersect. Therefore, our answer has to be B. All right, moving on to number 10. So the equation above is true for all x where a and b are constants. What is the value of a times b? Well, what we want to look for then as we see that we have ax and then minus bx. So we're looking at the x squared term. If we look at that on the right side, we have minus 9x. Keep in mind that we have to take into account that we have a plus 15x squared already over here. So we have plus 15x squared on our left side already. So we have to get from plus 15x squared to our minus 9x squared. So to our minus 9x squared. To get there, we have to go down by 24x squared. So to go down by 24x squared, we need the value of ab to be 24. Okay, that negative sign in front of negative in front of bx is what's going to take care of making it move down. But to get that value, we need a times b to be 24. Therefore, our answer has to be c. All right, moving on to 11. Which of the following represents all the possible values of x that satisfy the equation above? All right, well, in order to solve for this one, what we got to do is we're going to have to multiply each side by x minus 3. But First, what I want to point out is that when we have 2x over 2, we can cancel those 2s out. And that's just going to make this question a lot easier. So now that we've done this x minus 3, what we're going to do now is go ahead and um, instead of applying, we're going to go ahead and apply the x to the x minus 3. So we're going to have x squared minus 3x. From there, then, we also have to get all of our x's on the same side. So we're going to go ahead and subtract our x from each side to set it equal to 0. All right, so this is going to give us x squared minus 4x equals 0. We can go ahead and factor out an x, and we'll be left with x minus 4. So x times x minus 4 equals 0. Therefore, our potential solutions are x equals 0, and then our other potential solution would be x equals 4. We can go ahead and plug these in to make sure that they are going to be correct. So we'll plug in 0 first. 0 would leave us with 0 over 0 minus 3, which is equivalent to 0 over negative 3, which is going to be 0, obviously. And then is that equal to 2 times 0 over 2? Well, 2 times 0 is going to give us 0. 0 over 2 also equal to 0. Therefore, 0 is a potential solution. We can go ahead and get rid of C and D because they don't have that. So 0 is a solution that is contained in A and B. Now let's go ahead and look at 4. If we put 4 in, and we can actually go ahead and determine that our answer is going to be B because if we look at A, obviously it has 2, and we know that that's not a potential solution. So we could go ahead and solve it from there. If you just want to see to make sure that 4 works, I can go ahead and show you that as well. We'd have 4 over 4 minus 3, which is going to give us 4 over 1. Is that equal to 2 times... Um, 4 over 2. Yes, it is, right? We see that that's going to end up being 4 as well. So answer there is going to be B. You could have stopped after you saw that you had 0 as a correct answer because you can get rid of C, D, and then you know that 2 isn't a potential solution at all. So you could have easily gotten to B from there. All right, moving on to number 12 now. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression above for X is greater than 0? All right, in order to solve this, we see that we have fractions that we're adding. Obviously, 5 doesn't look like a fraction, but keep in mind it can be rewritten as 5 over 1. In order to add fractions, we need to have a common denominator. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply 5 by 
2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1. When we do that, we got to distribute our 5 to our 2x as well as to our 1, and we're going to end up getting 10x plus our 5 times 1 gives us 5, but we have to add this one here as well, which will be plus 6 all over top of 2x plus 1. So our correct answer here is going to be D. So keep it in mind that we have to get that common denominator to add those fractions. Let's go ahead and move over to 13 now. So we've got a graph. Graph of the function in the xy plane above is a parabola, which of the following defines f. Key thing I'm looking at here is I have given my vertex. Because I'm given my vertex, I can go ahead and get rid of b and d. Because with vertex form, we know that the x-coordinate of our vertex has to have this minus sign in front of it, right? So if our vertex is at 3, right, the x-coordinate's at 3, we have to have in parentheses x minus and then the x-coordinate, which in this case is 3. So from here, we can go ahead and check that our y-intercept of our vertex, or I'm sorry, our y-coordinate of our vertex, not intercept, our y-coordinate of our vertex, is positive 1, which it is in all these answer choices. So the only difference between a and c is whether or not we have a 4 out front. So to check this, what we can do is since we know x minus 3 is getting squared, if we were to go 1 over or 1 to our right or left of our vertex, since it's getting squared, we know that we'd go up 1 because 1 squared is going to be 1. Same thing with negative 1 squared. It's going to be 1 as well. So in this case, we see that our points are actually 4 higher. Or I'm sorry, they are 4 above um, moving 1 over, right? So if we move 1 over, we're going up 4 rather than 1. So we're going up by 4 instead of 1. Therefore, our answer has got to be A. All right, moving down to number 14 now. All right, 14, we're dealing with some inequalities with graphs. So in the which of the following does the shaded regions represent the solution set in the xy plane to the system of inequalities above? All right, so let's go ahead and draw out our potential solutions or our um, solutions to y is greater than or equal to x plus 2. So we can go ahead and find 2 in all of our graphs, right? I'll put a big blue dot there so you can see that better. All right, and then we know that we are going up by 1, so that's going to be our slope. So it's going to be this line that I'm putting in blue here on answer choice C, if you can see that. Okay, now our solutions are going to be where y is greater than that. So our potential solutions would be everything I'm shading in blue on C here. Okay, so everything above there. Next up, if we take a look at our next equation, we're going to want to go ahead and put this in y-intercept form just because it's going to be easier to look at. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have 3y, and then we're going to subtract 2x from each side. So we'll have 2x, negative 2x, plus 6. Then we'll divide each side by 3 as well to go ahead and isolate y. So when we do that, we're going to end up with negative two-thirds x and then plus two as well there. All right, so we see that we've got uh, that sort of uh, downward sloping, right? negative slope of negative two-thirds, and then we're also at that y-intercept of two. Now keep in mind here that y has got to be less than that. So we need to have, and I'm going to go ahead and put this in orange, our first equation, I'm going to put in orange, the potential solutions to that, I'm going to put this on B, are everything above here, okay, so everything above that line. Now our potential solutions, or our solutions for our second equation, or our second inequality, is everything that's below this blue line. Okay, so it's all of this here. Now you just look for where both of those are shaded. We see both of them are shaded, and I'm going to put this in red. We see that both of these are shaded right here. So this will be our correct answer right here. B will be our correct answer because that's where both of them are shaded. All right, so B is our correct answer for 14. All right, moving on to number 15 now. This is our last multiple choice question. All right, so we have, what is the set of all solutions to the equation square root x plus 2 equals negative x? Well, as always, we're going to want to go ahead and get rid of that square root. So to do that, we're going to square each side. When we do that, we're going to be left with x plus 2 is equal to x squared. From here, we're going to want to get all our x's on the same side. So we'll go ahead and subtract x from each side and also subtract 2 from each side. And we're going to be left with 0 is equal to x squared minus x minus 2. From here, we can go ahead and factor that out. We're going to end up with 0 is equal to x minus 2 and then times x plus 1. So our potential solutions then are x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 1. Now keep in mind, we have to plug these back in and make sure they work before we can answer this. So let's go ahead and plug in 2 first. So we'd have root 2 plus 2 is equal to negative 2. Is that true? Well, root 2 plus 2 is going to give us root 4, which we know would equal 2. That does not equal negative 2. Therefore, 2 is not a possible solution. So 2 is not a correct solution. So we can go ahead and get rid of A. We can get rid of C as well. All right, and now we take a look at negative 1. If we plug that in, we'd have the square root of negative 1 plus 2, which will give us the square root of 1, which will give us 1. And does that equal negative negative 1? Yes, it does, because that will also equal 1. So our answer here is going to be B. 
All right, moving on to the free response now. We got number 16. It's our first question. What is the volume in cubic centimeters of a right rectangular prism that has a length of 4 centimeters, a width of 9 centimeters, and a height of 10 centimeters? We know that our volume of a, rec of a rectangular prism is our length times our width times our height, which we know is going to equal 4 centimeters times 9 centimeters times 10 centimeters, which 4 times 9 gives you 36 times 10 will give you 360. So our answer here is going to be 360. All right, moving on to number 17. We have 4x plus 2 equals 4. If x satisfies the system of, if x satisfies the equation above, what's the value of 2x plus 1? I know that 2x plus 1 is half of 4x plus 2. Therefore, I take half of 4 as well. Half of 4 is going to leave me with 2, so my answer is going to be 2 for number 17. All righty, moving on to number 18. We've got a graph here. Uh, the figure shows the complete graph of the function f in the xy plane. The function g, not shown, is defined by g of x is equal to f of x plus 6. What is the maximum value of the function g? All right, well, the maximum value of g is going to be where the maximum value of f of x occurs and then plus 6 to that. We see the maximum value of f of x is at 2. We have to add 6 to that to get our maximum value of the function g. So we're going to have 2 plus 6, which we know will give us 8. So our answer will be 8. 8 is the maximum value of the function g. All right, on to number 19 now. So we've got triangle PQR has a right angle, which is q. So you can go ahead and draw this out if you want, uh, which I will do for you. We've got Q here, we've got P here, we've got R here. All right, if the sine of R is equal to 4 fifths, right, which sine means that our opposite would be 4 and our hypotenuse would be 5, what is the value of the tangent of P? We know our tangent is our opposite over our adjacent. So if we look down here, we know that we're going to have a 3 here because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Okay, if you ever see that you have a triangle and you have 5 as your hypotenuse and you have 4 as one of your legs, your other leg has to be 3. Likewise, if you see you have a triangle with 5 as a hypotenuse and you have 3 as one of your legs, your other leg will have to be 4. All right, so from this, we want the tangent of P. Therefore, we take the opposite, which is going to be 3, put it over the adjacent leg of uh, angle P, and that's going to be 4. So our answer is going to be 3 over 4, so 3 fourths. All right, moving on to number 20. We have the graph of the linear function F is shown in the XY plane. The graph of the linear function G not shown is perpendicular to the graph of F and passes through the point 1, 3. What's the value of G of 0? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plot the point 1, 3. Keep in mind that this is going to be uh, representative of g of 1, okay, so g of 1, go ahead and mark that down, g of 1 is that point there. Next key thing that we need to understand is that the graph of the linear function g is perpendicular to the graph of f. That means that it has the um, reciprocal of the slope and then also a flipped sign. So we see our slope of f of x here is going to be negative 2, okay, so f of x, f of x's slope is negative 2. So we can write that as negative 2 over 1, therefore g of x, g of x is slope. And I'm actually going to get rid of that apostrophe s because the apostrophe can be taken as a derivative. Um, so I'm just going to write g of x slope is going to be then flip the sign, so positive, and then flip the fraction, so it's going to be positive 1 half. Okay, so if we go ahead and put our slope down here as positive 1 half, as we see, we're going to end up crossing at 2 and a half. So our y-intercept would be 2 and a half which is g of 0. g of 0 is that y-intercept, which we see is at 2.5. So our answer there will be 2.5. 2.5. So hopefully this video is helpful. If it was, make sure to like and subscribe. In addition to that, leave any video requests that you have in the comments below. Also, if you're gaining value from my content, please consider donating. It helps me to be able to continue to put out these videos for free. In addition to that, if you're looking for private SAT tutoring, college essay editing, or college admissions consulting, be sure to check out my website. The link is in the description. 